Wall Street corrects for the fourth straight day ahead of the release of the jobs report for the month of October. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq slip over a percent. The Dow finishes half a percent lower a day after a hawkish Fed chair says it is too soon to pause rate hikes. Stocks in Europe closed largely higher with the exception of the British FTSE as the Bank of England hikes by 75 basis points, its biggest such increase since 1989. The central bank also warns of a prolonged recession that could last longer than the downturn during the 2008-2009 to financial crisis and says the outlook for the UK economy looks challenging. Stocks in the Asia-Pacific trade mixed, although the Japanese Nikkei corrects over 2%, the SGX Nifty 2 indicates a flatter start for the Indian market. In key results to track today, Sipla, Britannia and Titan from the Nifty will report second quarter numbers. From the broader markets, watch for earnings from Gale, Interglobe Aviation and TVS Motors. Good morning, happy Friday to all of you in the Mumbai News Center. I'm Sonal Bhutra and you're watching Power Breakfast. Well, those are the top headlines and we'll of course discuss them in greater details. But first up, let's take a look at what the Asian markets are doing. It was a weak handover that they got from, got from the Wall Street. However, they are largely mixed. And look at the Hang Seng Go. It's up 2.5% as we speak. However, it's Taiwanese index which is down 5 tenths of a percent. So it's largely mixed as far as the Asian screen is concerned. It's Nikkei which is taking it to the chin. That one is is uh, down around 2%. We also have something like a Kospi, which is trading in the green. But as a result of all of this, the SGX Nifty is indicating a flatter start with some negative bias. So it's an eight-point downtick that this particular index is indicating at that 18,106 mark. Let's move on, talk about the US markets now. Wall Street ended yesterday's trading session lower, with the Dow Jones slipping close to half a percent, S&P and the tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite closing over 1% lower. CNBC Sarah Eisen gets us a wrap of all the action on Wall Street. Stocks ended lower here on Wall Street, continuing the decline that started late yesterday after the head of the Federal Reserve made it clear that the central bank will keep aggressively raising interest rates to fight inflation. Investors worry those rate hikes will also put the economy into recession. The Dow closed with a loss of one half of 1%. The S&P 500 dropped more than 1%, and the Nasdaq ended one and three quarters percent lower. As the economic outlook gets gloomier, Amazon will pause hiring for a few months for all of its corporate roles. Still a lot of hiring back during the pandemic, but like other big tech companies, it's now getting ready for a downturn. That's the action from the U.S. market. Back to you in Mumbai. Okay, let's also listen into some reactions coming in from the Fed's monetary policy decision that was taken yesterday from former Fed board members Roger Ferguson, Charles Plosser and Richard Clatter. I think, in fact, what he was trying to do and succeeded at doing was keeping financial conditions relatively tight. We've talked about this several times in the past. And in that regard, you know, the, the drop in the market was probably, you know, quite consistent with uh, keeping financial conditions tight and therefore not unexpected and probably not unwelcome uh, by, by the Fed. You know, recognize that, as I've said several times, part of the challenge here is the Fed sees a certain reality, markets have a certain hope. Uh, and the reality has to uh, triumph over the hope, and that's what happened yesterday. It's not as though they have uh, started off the, the trip at a slow pace. They've moved very quickly. Secondly, um, as they said in their statement, we also know that that means there's a fair amount of tightening in the system. Many people were looking at the statement, hoping to find some um, weakening in the Fed's um, resolve, if you will, they, to slow down or stop or pivot or all the language. They were looking for that, but the statement really didn't say that. It has always been about what Powell said, we have to get rates high enough to restrain economic activity and growth. Powell was quite firm, and I believe he had to be. He had to continue with demonstrating the Fed's resolve because their credibility is at stake. The press conference was a different situation than the opening statement from the FOMC that they vote on. In fact, I was quite surprised at the opening uh, FOMC statement in the sense that it teed up a pause based upon having done a lot, they long and variable lags to monetary policy. 
uh, quite frankly, very dovish and more dovish than I expected, because I agree with the chair, they have a ways to go. The press conference set a completely different tone. I think some would say hawkish. I would say realistic, given what they need uh, to do. I do think that they eventually may get the funds rate up to 5%. I don't think it'll happen uh, in January. I think what the chair wanted to do yesterday that he accomplished is he wants the ability to you know, get off the train of 75 dip a meeting to tee up the ability to do 50 in December, and they've done that. But importantly, he did not want the markets to misread that for an early pause. Okay, that is some expert opinion coming in, but it's time to get you the final update on our global market wrap this morning. European markets ended mixed in Thursday's trading session with the French CAC over 30 points down, the German DAX Monday 26 points lower, and the British FTSE closing with an over 40 point gain. But to another big global central bank queue, the Bank of England raised interest rates by 75 basis points, its largest single hike since 1989 on Thursday. The 75 basis point increase takes the bank rate to 3%. The BOE also warned of a prolonged recession going ahead. CNBC's Steve Leesman gets us a wrap of all the action for us. The Bank of England joining the 75 basis point club, hiking rates from two and a quarter percent to three percent and saying that more rate hikes may be necessary. I'm just going through it now. But one headline that just jumped out at me, the BOE monetary policy report shows Inflation peaking at around 11 percent in the fourth quarter. Uh, the previous peak they had said they had said it would happen in October at just under 11. So they're looking at more inflation. They are saying that the peak rate may be lower than the market's forecast of 5.2 percent. But I'm not seeing at the moment what that peak is right now. Let me leave it there. Oh, here's an estimate for GDP in 2022. Uh, four and a quarter, a little bit better than the August forecast. Uh, 2023 minus one and a half percent for England and minus 1%. That's a, a steeper drop for 2024 than previously forecast. I'll leave it there. But rates rising around the world, rates rising here in the U.S., especially on the back of that uh, Fed press conference and statement yesterday, and now Bank of England joining the 75 Club. Okay, with that, let's listen in to what Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey told CNBC on the rate hike trajectory going forward. Listen in. There have been a very big movement in market interest rates during the course of August and September, and particularly when the market was going through a very turbulent period in, in the second half of September. Now, we've seen some of that reverse, but it, you know, it's still, it's still in, 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 in the course of doing so. And so we spent a lot of time saying, how can we, in a sense, reconcile our view of the economy, our view of inflation, uh, where it was going to go to with the market curve? And we do this partly for our forecast. And we found it very hard to do. We don't have a rate in mind for the future because we take our decisions you know, meeting by meeting. We have one of the largest upside risks to inflation in our forecast that we've had in the 25-year history of the MPC. A lot of that has to do with the tightness of the UK labour market. The UK labour market is very tight. Labour force has shrunk uh, since, since immediately before COVID. So there are risks. And it will be those risks that I think will have an important impact on how we, yeah, when we next meet um, in December and then thereafter how we think about policy decisions. All right, that's the global market action. But how will these cues impact our own markets? We have our research team joining in to tell you just that. The trade setup, the stocks and news and the action from the FNO space as well. Hi guys, a very good morning to all of you. Vivek, let me come across to you first. What is the market setup looking like today? Well, good morning. You know, it's a very muted and a mixed up cues that we are getting as far as you know most of the overnight action as well as the Asian markets are concerned. However, when, when we are talking about the U.S. markets, U.S. markets continue to decline for the fourth straight session and this is something that doesn't augur quite well as far as you know the cues that we take in the morning are concerned. Now, you know, markets are keenly awaiting the October jobs data report and when you are talking about the European markets, you know, European markets too ended quite mixed. All the negative commentary coming in as far as the you know, Bank of England is concerned ensured that you know the pound continued its weakness and the dollar strengthened. So, on the back of that you know a lot of commodity prices especially gold gold fell significantly lower by one percent and uh, you know both dollar as well as the treasury yields and continued their gaining streak or uh, when you're talking about uh, crude oil prices crude oil prices uh, fell quite significantly yesterday wti futures fell over two percent yesterday and brent futures were down almost one and a half percent when you're talking about some of the key results and q2 results that uh, 
will be in focus and Indian market will definitely look forward to these results. So, Sipla, Gale India, Titan, Interglobe Aviation and Britannia are some of the key companies that will be declaring their results today. When you're talking about Asian markets, Asian markets very mixed, you know, uh, Japanese markets are operating quite weak. LGX Nifty is indicating a very muted to a flat opening as far as our own markets are concerned. Okay. All right, uh, Vivek, thank you so much for that. Surbi is joining us and she'll list out all the stocks that will be in focus. Surbi? few stocks that I'll be tracking today. The first one is Hero Motor Corp, where the revenues have come in slightly above the CNBC TV18 poll at 9,075 crores and EBITDA and margins have come in pretty much in line with the poll at 1,038 crores and margins of 11.4%. Adani Enterprises, the revenue is down 6.5% sequentially, the EBITDA is up 7.3% and margins have come in 5%, at 5% versus 4% last quarter. Amara Raja Batteries, good set of numbers there. Revenue is up almost 20% on a year-on-year -year basis. EBITDA is up 33% and margins have also come in higher at 13% versus 12% same time last year. Vodafone, the revenue is up 2% sequentially. EBITDA is down 5.3% uh, and the average revenue per user has come in at 131 rupees versus 128 rupees in the last quarter. Sanofi, the revenue and EBITDA both are down close to 8% and the margins have come in flat at 26%. Blue Stars, the revenue is up 27% and the operating profit is up 21% at 86 crores. Few more earnings that will be coming out today are Sipla, Britannia, Ta uh, Titan, TVS Motors, Cummins and Gale. All right, all those stocks in focus and quite a handful of them. Uh, Surbi, thanks a lot for that. Uh, finally, let's go across to Mangalam joining in with all the cues from the FNO space. Hey, Mangalam. Good morning. So yesterday, the bulls weathered the Fed storm. In fact, our outperformance continues for the week. The Nifty is up a percent and a half while, uh, you know, Wall Street and leases are down anywhere between 3 to 7 odd percent for the Nasdaq itself. And the biggest reason for that is, uh, you know, the FII belief in India over the last few trading sessions. In fact, even yesterday, we saw a purchase of close to around 700 odd crores. However, in yesterday's trading session, there was some short addition in index futures, 1,008 crores worth selling by the FIs in index futures, and they've added around 15,000 shorts, which is not necessarily a bad thing because the FII longs were earlier 66%, now they've dropped to around 59%, and as a result of which, the shorts have increased from 34% to 41%. Why is this a positive or why is this not a negative? Because one, Increasing shorts balances the market out. And secondly, if these shorts don't get any follow-through and India continues its outperformance, there is some fuel for short covering as well. As far as the options are concerned, yesterday was options expiry. So let's talk about the options next week. 18,000 is the key fulcrum level for our market because both 18,000 call as well as 18,000 puts have the maximum open interest. The combined premium on both these is close to around 300 points. So that's telling you that the broader range that the smart money is playing for on the Nifty is 17,700 to 18,300. However, in the extreme near term, 18,000 will play as an important support. For the Nifty Bank as well, which outperformed in yesterday's trading session, ended in the green, we have 41,000 put, which had the maximum open interest, and 42,000 call, having the maximum open interest as well. And as we speak, you know, uh, the premium indicates that levels between 40,700 to 40, 41,000 will be an extremely important support for the Nifty Bank, and the outperformance may continue. The SGX Nifty, absolutely flat. Let's see where we go this Friday. Okay, it's Friday. That's also a big cue, right? Guys, thank you so much for joining us and taking us through what to expect from the market moves today. And now we'll slip into a short break. We review second quarter numbers from Hero Motor and Adani Enterprises when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Still tuned into Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Let's uh, get you some important earnings reviews now. Hero Motor Corp reported its second quarter numbers post market hours yesterday. Sonia is joining us to tell us more. Sonia, how were the numbers? Well, uh, you know, the margins for Hero Motor Corp continue to be under pressure. So that is really the big problem pocket for Hero Motor Corp. The revenues were not bad. It was uh, largely in line with estimates. Uh, in fact, slightly above the, uh, than what the street was estimating. So a 7% growth is what we saw on the top line. Uh, but it's the margins that continue to, uh, you know, crimp down. One, because of, of course, raw material cost pressures. But uh, the other thing is that the company has been unable to see a, a consistent recovery in its volumes because of the pressure that we're seeing in the rural markets. And that's reflecting in the margin performance as well. The margins were down 110 basis points year on year, coming in at 11.4%. Um, there was a very slow recovery, as I said, in the rural markets, because of which the total Q2 volumes were down 0.7% year on year, coming in at 14 0.28 lakhs. If you look at the trend as far as volumes are concerned, 
done, um, there has been a little bit of an improvement on a sequential basis. So from about less than 12 lakhs in Q4, the volumes have picked up to 14.2 lakhs. But if you look at the margin trend, there there's still a recovery to be seen compared to the 12, 12.5% margins that they saw four quarters ago, there still has been no great recovery. The management though says that the global macro headwinds may keep the play field a bit uncertain and navigating the same over the next few quarters will be important. However, as the commodity uh, cools off and the rate cycle reaches its peak, the medium-term outlook for the auto sector looks quite encouraging at the moment. So, positive, slightly cautious commentary from the management, but uh, the nothing great in the numbers. Margins continue to be under pressure. Back to you. All right, okay. Margins continue to be under pressure. Sonia, thank you so much for analyzing those numbers. Adani Enterprises, on the other hand, reported a good set of second quarter numbers. Vivek is here to give us all those details. Vivek. Well, that's right. So, Adani Enterprises, you know, the uh, flagship or, you know, if you call it the incubating company as far as the Adani Group is concerned, delivered a robust set of numbers as far as Q2 is concerned. You know, what we have to keep in mind is the fact that the company actually has acquired quite a few new businesses and which is why, you know, you're actually seeing the revenue jump up quite significantly. Even operationally, it's been a strong quarter. Looking at the results, you know, the main uh, trigger as far as the higher revenues are concerned has been the strong coal trading volumes and also margins on that front have been quite positive. The coal trading volumes uh, came in at close to 25.2 uh, million tons versus 50 million tons on a year-on-year -year basis. Talking about the revenues, the revenues jumped up almost 190% uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, coming in slightly over the 38,100 crore mark. Uh, when you're talking about the margins, margins at close to 5% versus 6.7% on a year-on-year -year basis and profitability more than doubling again on a year on your basis talking about the key segmental highlights to keep track of when you're talking about the adani roads division you know one of the key projects uh, the ganga expressway achieved financial closure and this closure was for over 10,200 crores. Uh, Adani Airports, you know, one of the largest uh, airports handler, has actually managed to handle passengers of almost 90% of the pre-COVID levels. Again, a significant improvement as far as, you know, operating metrics are concerned on that front. Uh, solar manufacturing and coal mining this time around saw so slightly subdued operational performance. Okay, all right. That is about Adani Enterprises, all about the nifty companies that reported numbers yesterday during close. Uh, well, uh, with that, we'll slip into a break now. Up next, we'll get you all the cues from the commodities market. Stay tuned. Capital, the air quality situation in New Delhi continues to worsen with pollution levels slipping into the severe category yet again, as double burning and vehicular traffic continue to contribute to the thick smog over the city. In an attempt to resolve the situation, the Air Quality Management Commission has stopped the entry of trucks into the city with only those carrying essential items allowed. Diesel-powered heavy goods vehicles have also been banned, while diesel passenger cars, with the exception of those meeting BS6 standards, have also been taken off the streets. Schools in Noida have also been told to hold classes online up to the 8th grade. Former Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan was injured after a man reportedly opened fire at him at a rally in the country's Punjab province. Visuals show Imran Khan standing on top of a vehicle surrounded by supporters when shots can be heard. Leaders of Imran Khan's party uh, was claiming the incident as an assassination bid. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif issued a statement condemning the incident and asked authorities to immediately launch an investigation. Khan, who was ousted as the Prime Minister of Pakistan earlier this year, is leading a long march to Islamabad, protesting against what he calls illegitimacy of the Shehbaz Sharif-led government. He began his long march on 28 October, demanding early elections after his government was removed in April this year. The Indian government said that they are monitoring the situation closely. Okay, all right, some updates also coming in from Israel. Former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will return to power after a coalition led by him won a majority of the seats in the parliament. His opponent, the current centrist Prime Minister, Ye Lapid, also conceded defeat and congratulated him. Outgoing Prime Minister conceded defeat after his coalition won 51 seats, short of the majority in a 120-seat parliament. Netanyahu, who is also facing charges of corruption, now has 28 days to form the new government in Israel. All right, finally, let's get you some updates from the commodity space. Manisha Gupta is joining us this morning. Hey, Manisha, good morning. Morning, Sonal. Thank you for that. Well, we have started on a bearish note for many of these commodities as markets see the U.S. dollar index rebounding. There also is an uh, aggressive rate hike that we've seen from Bank of England. Actually, when you look at the U.S. Fed, ECB and Bank of England, we've seen 75 basis point of a rate hike coming in from all of them. 
The crude oil prices have slipped 2% overnight. They are headed for a weekly decline. Markets also are looking at uh, China suggesting that the COVID cases surge is uh, highest since the month of August. And China also dismissed speculation on scaling back on COVID restrictions. That seems to be weighing on not just on crude oil prices, but on metals as well. You have seen the rubber prices continue to decline, which are now trading at the lowest since July 2020, with 20% of a decline in this year. Rubber prices have continued to be on the weaker side as well. Weak demand from automakers locked down in 28 cities in China only makes matters worse. All right, so bearish cues from the commodity markets. Manisha, thank you so much for joining us. Well, uh, we don't know what that would mean for the markets because generally Asian markets are quite mixed this morning. This despite the weak handover that we got from the Wall Street. We have Hang Seng, which is reeling under a lot of pressure. Uh, sorry, which is doing really well. It's Taiwanese index, which is reeling under some pressure. Hang Seng has surged in how it's up 3.6% in trade. That's a 550 point uptick. When we started the show, it was up around 2.5%. So bullish cues coming in there. SJX Nifty is. Uh, recovering from the lows as well. It is in the green right now. Up 10 odd points. So let's see whether that happens for our own markets or not. For now, SJX Nifty in the green, but absolutely flat as well. We'll take your leave on this edition of Power Breakfast. Stay tuned. Bazaar Morning Call comes up next.